Dan ketika ini telah pun berakhirnya hari kedua bagi acara forum WIF edisi ke-8 di Johor Bahru ketika ini. Dan antara sesi forum yang telah berlangsung hari ini adalah forum penjagaan wanita WIF dan forum pemimpin muda WIF. Pada blok forum penjagaan wanita antara sesi yang berlangsung adalah panel CEO usahawan wanita, inovasi penjagaan wanita dalam wanita dalam teknologi dan juga dialog. Dan bagi merumuskan sesi ini bersama saya adalah Dato Hazimah Zainuddin, pengarah urusan Hirex Oil. Well, hi uh, Dato, we meet again. Yes, hi Serena, how are you? And I'm very fine, thank yeah. you. And uh, Dato, why not we start off uh, by you summing up what were the G's of the events that happened today? Oh, today it was it's a very interesting event. Um, it, happens, it started off with the, the woman uh, panel discussion. Um, Catalyst for Change, eh? Moon Entrepreneur Catalyst for Change. I think during the session, uh, we had a very good uh, two speakers. Um, one is from um, the, the, the Shaika, which is from um, UAE, mm -hmm. and uh, Dr. Wan Di from Thailand. Both of them shared their views, and um, and I can see that interaction from the crowd is really good, good interaction, and and they learn a lot about um, about how to struggle <laughs> to be successful. Yeah, to be to be successful is no shortcut, and um, especially Dr. Wan Di from from um, just a civil servant now, she become a success, successful entrepreneur, and. Um, I can sum up that it is a very successful event and uh, most of the women walked out of the hall feeling satisfied with what mm -hmm. they have heard. Yeah. Were they also inspired by it? Because were, I was also at the forum and I yeah. find both speakers very inspiring. Precisely. They were very, absolutely. They were so inspired um, and the interaction during the question and answer was good. I have to stop them from, from asking more questions because mm -hmm. they, they feel that they, they were so impressed with the, um, how both of them have made it to the top mm -hmm. and it's not easy. Um, a woman Woman in the men's world, women in not in the conventional business that they are in. Um. And that there was also a dialogue session um, mm -hmm. uh, before the the uh, forum for women entrepreneur ends ended at one o'clock earlier mm -hmm. this yeah. afternoon. So what were highlighted during uh, the um, dialogue I think session? During the dialogue session, um, more uh, hi highlighted uh, issues highlighted was uh, on how women have to face a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. um, instead of the men, more challenges than the men, um, especially in terms of getting financing, getting funding, uh, people look at us not quite seriously. So I thought in Malaysia we are quite lucky because we have been um, looked at by, at the, by the government of Malaysia mm -hmm. quite seriously, but uh, from the rest of part of the world, especially in UAE and, and Thailand, they are facing a lot of uh, challenges uh, and issues, which I think um, we don't really face it in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, thank thank God that we are we have a supportive government and looking at the women quite seriously. And mm -hmm. well, all we have to do is to make sure we are um, uh, what do you call it um, active enough to participate in this kind of forum, convention, or whatever um, uh, conferences that is organised by the um, NGOs or the government support uh, agency, so that we can learn a lot more. You know, uh, mm -hmm. things about a woman. In, from different region and different mm -hmm. countries, yeah. And moving forward for the entrepreneurs in Malaysia, mm -hmm. um, women entrepreneurs in Malaysia, um, since we have a lot of support from the government mm -hmm. and organisations and whatnot, what's in store for this one? Um, looking at look, moving forward, uh, look at what on the first day, like that was really, uh, our, our uh, beloved Prime Minister, what he have mentioned that let's nurture the young entrepreneurs don't just focus on um, you know the current entrepreneurs nurture bring them up uh, because these are the people who are who's going to be uh, brought up to a different level these are the people who are going to represent um, us in future so we're trying to nurture the young entrepreneurs As same goes with um, ngos in malaysia we we have lots and lots of participation from the the younger generation um, it ranges from the age of um, 25 to uh, 35 they come forward and join the ngo join the association just to learn about nurturing process just to learn about how to be successful in um, mm -hmm. sharing experience with the success, successful entrepreneurs and looking at the hall today from the forum I can see that half of the hall from the young 
uh, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. or future entrepreneurs uh, in the making. Yeah. And Dato, during our conversation earlier, you've also mentioned that um, though women in Malaysia, we are very privileged because um, in terms of uh, for entrepreneurs, we are well taken care of by mm -hmm. the government with green lanes and whatnot. But at the same time, you also emphasize that we should not overindulge in that and we yeah. should always compete in a level playing field. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'd like to elaborate more on that. Yeah, because um, like what Dato, uh, Dr. Nurasha mentioned, the glass ceiling is almost broken between mm -hmm. uh, the, the women uh, 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 in Malaysia. But but the thing is, um, we shouldn't be um, in Malaysia gulungan yang meminta-minta. We, mm -hmm. we should be, you know, for tough enough to be fighting with the with the men. Or we are not fighting uh, with the mm -hmm. men, but meaning uh, like what uh, Dr. Shaika was saying. Um, tenders and so on you know when you participate in tenders be serious with it and and make sure you know your stuff well you know your product well uh, practice integrity practice uh, a lot of uh, what you call the confidence over what you what, uh, product knowledge and so on and so forth so you have to equip yourself with lots of um, um, to be prepared to be level playing field out there mm -hmm. uh, yeah. but, but how do we uh, ensure that we create this level playing field not only for people in the urban area but also women in the rural area as well you know we, we are doing our level best to bring the people from the uh, rural area to come forward uh, through um, uh, agency under ministry of international trade sme corp um, uh, even kementerian pembangunan uh, kementerian perdagangan dalam negeri kpdn mm -hmm. we just had a, a, a session with them we go out there to meet with the rural people People, uh, the, the future entrepreneurs to nurture them to make sure they run the business the right way start up business they know the legal part of the business they know everything about the business as, as a whole then we can go all level playing field we have to be equipped yeah in order to be successful okay yeah. thank you very much Adato, for summing up uh, the highlights for today for the WIF the second year of WIF yeah, thank you for having uh, me here yeah. all right dan itu sebentar tadi adalah Dato Hazim Hazanuddin pengarusan Hirex Oil yang berkongsi mengenai perkara-perkara ataupun isu isu yang telah diutarakan pada WIF kali ke-8 hari kedua yang berakhir hari ini dan kita teruskan dengan laporan berikutnya Komoros mempelabur pelabur Malaysia menanam modal di negara itu khususnya di dalam sektor pelancongan dan juga tenaga negara ketiga terkecil Afrika mengikut kawasan itu turut berminat menandatangani perjanjian dua hala dengan negara yang mahu melabur di negara itu bersempena dengan forum ekonomi Ekonomi Islam Dunia ke-8 di Johor Bahru, Presiden Komoros Dr. Iki Lilo Donine mengadakan sidang media bagi memawarkan peluang pelaburan di negara itu dan insentif yang ditawarkan mereka. Menurut Dr. Donine, setakat ini pelabur asing terbesar di negara itu ialah Qatar dalam sektor perikanan. Komoros juga merancang untuk membangunkan sistem keuangan Islam di negara itu dalam usaha untuk menghasilkan sistem keuangan yang kukuh. Tahun lepas, pertumbuhan Komoros sebanyak 2% dipacu ekspor peladangan dan permintaan akhir swasta disokong oleh penghantaran pulang wang oleh pendatang. Sementara itu, isteri Sultan Johor, Raja Zarif Sofia Almarhum Sultan Idris Sudi mencemar duli menghadiri WIEF 2012 sebagai panelis dalam sesi bertajuk cabaran dan peluang dalam menjayakan perusahaan sosial. Semasa sesi terbabit, Raja Zarif Sofia berkongsi pengalamannya sebagai salah seorang sukarelawan Persatuan Bulan Sapit Merah. Pada sesi terbabit, Raja Zarid Sofia turut berkongsi pengalaman mengurus bencana, antaranya bencana banjir di Johor pada 2006. Turut disentuh ialah soal pengurusan badan amal. Um, I, I think it, knowing that I can make a difference to just one child or just one family, that that's good enough. We, we we have, I think all of us, you know, when we want to do charity work or we want to do some good in this world, we always think, We'd like to save the whole world, and of course that's not uh, possible. So we try to do the best we can um, with the Grameen uh, Bank, which uh, Mr. Mo uh, Muhammad Yunus, yeah, Muhammad Yunus uh, started. He, he's thinking specifically of, of the area where he grew up in and which he's um, used to. Um, and of course, you know, when we, see, when we think about tsunamis and, and hurricanes and thunderstorms, you would like to help and you know the drought in Africa and so on 
But I think we always have to start small and start with what we have around us. Be aware of the local problems that we have because local problems in uh, Malaysia might not be the same in another country. Organize. Pada sesi terbabit, baginda turut memaklumkan mengenai penubuhan Zadet Sofia bagi penyelidikan Islam di Universiti Philadelphia. I think you agree with me that there is a great need for an understanding of Islam and that if you see and if you see that you know how we are here, uh, we're not aggressive people, we're, we're not doing anything bad, we're just listening to each other and we can laugh and we all have the same concerns. We all worried about uh, poverty, we all want to try and make the world a better place. So I'm hoping that this global center in, in uh, American University can bring across those ideas that we're not such a bad lot after all. Mengenai soal pendidikan pula, baginda berpendapat lebih banyak pusat latihan vocational perlu didirikan dan tidak hanya tertumpu kepada pengwujudan universiti. Jelas baginda pusat latihan vokasional memberikan peluang kepada anak-anak muda yang tidak berminat dalam bidang akademik untuk terlibat dalam bidang kemahiran. Sesi perkenaan berlangsung selama 45 minit.